present George Edwards as the Hunchback of Notre Dame. In the previous episode, we heard how Pierre Grinois had paid a visit to Esmeralda in prison and had left her promising to do all in his power to help her. Pierre then had an interview with Quasimodo, and they arranged to try and strike a dumb follow through his brother, Johan de Moulin. It was arranged that Pierre should bring Johan de Moulin to the belfry, and that Quasimodo should seize him, take him to the top of the belfry, and threaten to hurl his body to the flagstones below, unless Dom Frollo obeyed his orders. Quasimodo agreed to this plan, and Pierre went to look for Johan. In the meantime, Johan and Dom Frollo were conversing in one of the anterooms of the Cathedral of Notre Dame. You should be satisfied now, my brother. Esmeralda is going to die. I am not satisfied. I feel as if I had been lashed by a thousand devils. Some black madness drove me to persecute that girl. Oh, I cannot understand you. First you wish to persecute her, and then you regret having done so. She is out of my power now. If things had been different, I might have been able to teach her to love me. Oh, forget about her. There are many other women in the world. She is going to hang, and that is the end of it. There will be one less gypsy scoundrel in the world. I suppose that is the correct way to look at it. I am tired of discussing this gypsy witch. There is a little matter of money that I wish to discuss with you, my brother. You will get no money from me. You must remember that I am a student, and it costs me a good deal to live. I think you should pay the other 25 gold pieces which you owe me. You will get no more money from me. You are an extravagant wastrel. Claude. I shall be forced to have something to say to my Lord Cardinal unless you can find money for me. What do you mean by that, Your Honor? I have obeyed your orders, my brother. I have committed murder for your sake. Did I not slay Phoebus de Chateaupere by your orders? Yes, you did. Did I not attempt to slay Pierre Gringoire, the poet? Well, what of it? Should I mention to my Lord Cardinal that you were concerned in these matters, it would make it rather awkward for you, Claude. You could not mention it to him because it would make it more awkward for yourself. Murderers are hanged in Paris. I know it. And their accomplices are also hanged. You would not dare go to my Lord Cardinal. I think I could go without doing myself any harm. I could suggest that my brother's actions demanded close inquiry. It would make it very awkward for you, Claude. You unnatural devil. You are my own brother, and you are threatening to endanger my life. Hear me. I carried out your orders and slew Phoebus to Shadow Pair. Now I demand payment. And if that payment is not prompt, then I will take other action. So you would try to blackmail me, you scoundrel. Well, just ten pieces of gold. Not one piece of gold. Well, seven pieces of gold. I promised our mother that I would look after you and attend to your welfare. It is not my fault that you are such a good for nothing. Here, take seven pieces of gold. Ah. Go spend it wisely. And do not come and pester me for money again. Enter. What do you want here, Pierre Gringoire? I came to plead with you, Don Polo, to ask you if you could intercede with my Lord Cardinal to spare the life of Esmeralda. I can do nothing. Oh, go away, Pierre. We are tired of hearing about Esmeralda. Her troubles will soon be over. You used to like her once, your heart. She is only a gypsy girl. What does it matter? There is too much trouble and bother being made over the girl altogether. Have you forgotten that she is my wife? Oh, oh, yes. I, I had forgotten that. I do not wish to discuss the matter with you, your heart. I am asking you, Don Follow, for your own sake to intercede with my Lord Cardinal on behalf of Esmeralda. You dare to threaten me, Pierre Gringoire? I was not threatening you, Don Frollo. I was pleading with you. Get you gone, foolish poet, and be pleased that I have removed this witch from your life. She did not love you. You lie, and I say you must save her. You will regret it if you do not heed my request. I will make you pay, Don Frollo, you black-hearted scoundrel. Ah, the poet is gaining courage. Speak on, Pierre. This interests me. I have nothing to say to you, Johan. Well, Don Polo, are you prepared to intercede to try and save Esmeralda? There is nothing I can do. I leave you now. I have duties to which I must give my attention. Well, Pierre, it looks as if you will have to find a new wife. I wanted to have private speech with you, Johan. Well, speak on. I cannot speak here. Your brother may return at any moment. I have a scheme by which you may earn a good deal of money. Money? Yes. That sounds good. 
I will come for a walk with you, and you can tell me of your scheme. No, no, not now. The scheme I have is a dishonest way of earning money. We must go to some place where there is no chance of our being overheard. Oh, I care not whether it be honest or dishonest, as long as it is safe. Oh, it is quite safe. I have to complete certain arrangements. Then I will come back at Vespers tonight and meet you in the belfry of the cathedral. We will be free from disturbance there. Quasimodo may be wandering about there. Oh, what does he matter? No one ever takes any notice of Quasimodo. Will you meet me in the belfry tonight? Yes, Pierre. I will be there. I am glad you are trying to forget about Esmeralda and thinking of the more practical things of life. Money and pleasure. Those are all that count in this life. You show me how to make money, and I will show you how to spend it. That night, after the bells had tolled for Vespers, Pierre Grinois and Johan de Moulin met in the belfry of the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Johan had made good use of the seven golden pieces which his brother had given him, and he was considerably the worse for wine. Oh, dear. Let me hear your scheme. Are you sure there is no one about here, Johan? Oh, what does it matter if anyone's about? Now, come, fellow, why did you bring me here? Tell me how we can make a lot of money. Tell me how to get rich, foolish poet. There is someone coming. Who is it? Why, it is only that hunchback fool, Quasimodo. He does not matter. Come, Quasimodo. Johan is here. Why do you call Quasimodo? Has he something to do with this scheme? He has a lot to do with this scheme. Quasimodo going to make money, eh? <laughs> that will be something new. Johan de Moulin, you are a worthless good for nothing. But for once in your life, you are going to do something useful. You are going to attempt to save Esmeralda. Take your hands off me, Quasimodo. Is this a plot? Yes, Johan, it is a plot. Seize him, Quasimodo. Take him up the ladder to the top of the tower. Let me go. I'm as strong as a thousand devils. Let me go, Quasimodo. What does this mean? Claude, my brother, help. Quiet. Help. Quiet, you fool. Your brother cannot help you now. You are coming with me. Quasimodo, I'm sorry for all I have done to you in the past. Do not kill me. Let me live, I beg of you. What mercy did you show to Esmeralda? It was by your foul plot that she became caught in the toils of the law. I am going to use you to try and save her life, your heart. Have you taken a leave of your senses? Pierre, make him release me. It will be in your brother's power to save your life. We are only concerned with saving Esmeralda. What are you going to do? Oh, why does not someone come to help me? Help! Help! Quiet, you dog, or I will kill you now. I have many scores to settle with you, your heart. Poor suppose you have mercy. I am sorry that I have jeered at you in the past. I ask now for mercy. I will reward you. I will give you gold. You never have any gold, and gold is of no use to me. I beg that you let me live. It depends on your brother whether you live or not. I am taking him up the ladder now, Pierre. You go and find Dom Frollo and bring him here. Let me go! Uh, Why are you taking me to the top of the tower? Uh, What's the boat uh, you? I'm breaking my back. Let uh, me go! Come quietly with me. Do not struggle. When Dom Frollo returns, he shall decide whether you are to live or die. Pierre Grinois hastily went into the cathedral and found Dom Frollo. Then he brought him back into the belfry. He pointed to the top of the tower, and there Dom Frollo saw his brother Johan, firmly held by Quasimodo. Quasimodo, why have you taken Johan to the top of the belfry? Quasimodo is almost dead. He cannot hear you properly from down here, Dom Frollo. You will address your remarks to me. What does this mean? Claude, Claude, Quasimodo is going to kill me. Make him let me go. Quasimodo, ah. it is your master calling to you. Bring my brother down at once. Speak to Pierre Gringoire. He will tell you our terms. Dom Frollo, if you would save your brother's life, you must swear a solemn oath to intercede with my Lord Cardinal to spare Esmeralda's life. You fool. I cannot do anything now the Cardinal has passed sentence. You can intercede. Claude, you must intercede with my Lord Cardinal. If my life is of any value to you, if you desire me to live, go at once to my Lord Cardinal and tell this hunchback fiend to let me go. Ah. I order you to come down here, Quasimodo, and bring my brother safely down. If any harm comes to him... You shall die. If Esmeralda lives, your hand shall live. 
You heard what he said, John Prado? You can save Esmeralda's life. I can do nothing. I swear I can do nothing. Hear me, John Prado. Will you go at once and beg the Cardinal to spare Esmeralda's life? I cannot do it, Quasimodo. I brought the charge against Esmeralda. I cannot ask him to spare her life. Bring my brother down at once. Claude, he means what he says. For mercy's sake, tell him that you will try and save Esmeralda. It cannot be done, your Johan. So be it. We have talked enough. Claude, uh, he is going to kill me. Uh, he is holding me above uh, his head. I... Uh... John Prello and Pierre Greenwa drew back as Johan de Moulin's body hurtled to the ground. Has Johan de Moulin been killed? What further strange events will take place in this story? We shall hear that in the next episode of The Hunchback of Notre Dame.